please be seated. Chancellor, University Council, Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, senior officers, academic and professional staff, graduands, graduands, families and friends. It is with pleasure that I welcome you to Victoria University's graduation ceremony for the VU College and the College of Business. My name is Susan Young and I'm the Dean of Students at Victoria University and your MC for today. On behalf of my fellow Victoria University staff, I extend a warm welcome and congratulate all graduands on their achievement today. As a mark of respect to Australia's Indigenous people, we acknowledge the ancestors, elders and families of the Boomerang and Woiwurrung of the Kulin, who are the traditional owners of the university land. As we share our own knowledge practices within the university, may we pay respect to the deep knowledge embedded within the Aboriginal community and their ownership of country. We acknowledge that the land on which we meet is the place of age-old ceremonies of celebration, initiation and renewal, and that the Kulin people's living culture has a unique role in the life of this region. Now, before we undertake the conferral of awards, I would like to invite Mr. Jean-Marc Imbert to present today's occasional address. Jean-Marc is a partner at RSM Australia and the national head of RSM's Risk Advisory Services Group. He specialises in internal audit, risk adv advisory and corporate advisory and system audit. He's also head of RSM Global Risk Consulting Committee for the Asia Pacific region. Jean-Marc's principal area of specialist expertise is in energy, water, transport, infrastructure, financial services and community sectors. He is particularly interested in the advancement of the profession as well as contributing to the promotion of women on boards and diversity initiatives. Jean-Marc is a VU alumnus. Would you all please join with me in welcoming Mr. Jean-Marc Imbert. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, Chancellor uh, George Pappas, Vice Chancellor Professor Peter Dawkins, graduates of uh, Victoria University, and distinguished guests. I am indeed Jean Marc Imbert. I'm uh, from RSM, one of the partners of RSM in Australia. Uh, 20 years ago, on the 6th of May 1997, I, I went into my study to check the dates. I sat where you are right now, um, I, I, in, the, in the Victorian University graduate ceremony. Accompanying me was my uh, lovely wife, Dominique, who is here again today, my uh, six-year-old son, Didier, my nine-month-old son, Joël, and due to some clever maneuvering at the time, I will, and sweet talking to the organizers, I managed to also get my parents to be in attendance at the graduate ceremony. I was 28 years, of, years old, and beside my wedding day, and the day when I uh, witnessed the birth of my three children, uh, this was a very proud moment in my life. I worked really hard for my bachelor degree in uh, business, majoring in accounting. It took me actually seven years of hard work, of part-time study at Victoria University while working full-time, playing soccer or football part-time for some extra dollars, and being a husband and a father of two little boys. Here I was about to become the first member of my extended family to become a university graduate. My parents, sisters, and of course, my wife were extremely proud of my achievement. However, like many of you here today, I had absolutely no idea what I was ahead of me, what hell ahead of me. So don't be fearful. 
as far as my career was concerned, that is. All I knew is that the following week, I had to, to do my first primary presentation for my first module of the Chartered Accountant Postgraduate Program. But in my heart, I felt that I was ready, as I did all the hard yards studying at Victoria University. And the wonderful teachers who were all very patient and drilled into me all I needed to know. I must be honest, I was not a very good student. I was often distracted by work issues, my son wanting to spend more time with me, and of course, the big mortgage my wife and I were servicing. But when I walked on stage to receive my degree, I was overwhelmed with joy, joy and a sense of belonging. You see, I, wa I was fulfilling a dream when I first set foot in Australia. This wonderful country, uh, when I was 16 years, of, years old, without my parents and my sisters, and, 300 and $390 in my pocket. But hope in my heart, of course. I made myself a promise, a promise that I still keep now at the age of 48, and still drives me professionally in my, in my life in general. I promised myself that I would never become a burden on the Australian government. Being awarded this uh, degree was a huge step in fulfilling that promise, as I knew that would open the, the world of opportunities for me. When I walked outside the ceremony, like many of you will do uh, very shortly, and back, back in those days, mind you, there was no selfies or mobile phone. It's hard to believe that. I took two photos. One was with my wife and my two boys, and another with my mom and dad. They were so proud, and my dad gave me a big hug and told me, you are the first in birth to graduate with a degree, and you are my son. It sounded almost like Mufasa in Lion King, if those of you like Lion King. One month later, on the 15th of June, 1997, my dad passed away, following a long battle with heart problems and diabetes. These words resonated in my ears at all times. As a matter of fact, it draws me. You see, my dad passed away two days before my first chartered accountant post-graduation exam. He passed away on a Saturday, and my exam was on a Monday. I had every reason in the world not to see that exam, not to mention to seek special consideration. Following strong support from my wife and sisters, I sat the exam. And guess what? This little battler born in Mauritius happened to pass it. This was a turning point in my life, thanks to the strong guiding I received here at Victoria University which really kept me in good stead and provided me with the courage to strive. No, no doubt some of you here are without your family and with the hopes and dreams similar to mine that to succeed and to fulfill your, career, your chosen career ambitions. Surprisingly to many, including myself I must say, I breezed through the Chartered Accountant Program and in less than a year and a half later, I was admitted as an associate of the Institute of Chartered Accounting. It coincided with my promotion to senior manager because all these years while I was at university, I was studying part-time. I was working full-time. And in January 2001, at the ripe old age of 32, I was invited to join the partnership of RSM Australia's partners. Following a growth in the new risk advisory service line that I started two years earlier. Having that courage to start a new division in a firm is always daunting, but I did it because I was equipped with all the skills I needed. As a young partner and the first non Caucasian partner, it was really daunting. I remember my first national partners meeting in Perth. I walked into the room with the, the then 56 partners and quickly realized the lack of diversity at the partners level. Instead of feeling awkward, and I turned, I turned this into a positive experience, 
by being grateful for the partners at the time for their foresight to admit me, someone who has never walked the corridors of an ex exclusive private school, nor been brought up in the southeastern suburb of Melbourne. I was a proud first generation migrant that was comfortable from where, comfortable from where I came from. I earned the same qualification as they had and was confident on my ability to provide professional services to the client base of the firm. In 2002, some of you might remember, the famous Enron disaster happened. And Sabin's Oxley started to become a, 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 an act. The following year, my firm experienced ex unprecedented growth in compliance engagement. Confident of my knowledge, again, in my days here at Victoria University, I accepted the role of National Head of Risk Advisory Services and, Red Head, and Head of Risk Consulting in Asia Pacific, roles that I proudly hold almost 14 years later today. These roles have taken me to all the corners of the world. I've had the pleasure of presenting on both technical and not technical topics everywhere I went. Without the strong grounding I receive as a student here at Victoria University, I may not be, be as confident in delivering those presentations to audiences around the world. In, fully, in fulfilling my dreams, I could not help being grateful and humble by how my career has panned out. I really wanted to contribute in an affirmative way to issues that comforted me in my early years as a partner that of diversity. In 2005, I started the Women on Board event. I know many of you will sit here wondering why would a man start a Women on Board event? Well, my logic was very simple. I knew I had felt being the new kid on the block and being different in the, in the way I think, behave, and also my values. I felt that I, I understood better than my peers the, class, the glass ceiling issue and I should do something about it. Almost 12 years later, Women on Boards has become a signature event in the corporate scene in Melbourne and in Sydney, I may add. And, and last Monday, the 31st of July, I hosted an event where the Honorable Nicola Roxon, former Commonwealth Minister of Health, spoke on the topic of declining trust in institution and government, how do directors respond? When I introduced Nicola on Monday, it dawned on me that in addition of her achievement as a minister, chair of the APS board, and BUPA, a director of BUPA, she was also an adjunct professor of Victoria University. What an incredible coincidence. In the very week I am due to speak to present to you today. Needless to say, with the hosts and the guests emanating from the same wonderful institution that is a Victorian University, the event was a resounding success. Now to my future goal, which I will just touch on briefly. That six-year-old son of mine, DJ, who came with me and my wife to the Victoria University graduation 20 years ago, was, I guess, inspired as he's now studying his last module of the Chartered Accountant program, and he's following my footsteps in becoming a Chartered Accountant. If you follow me on LinkedIn, LinkedIn, as many of you always follow people now on LinkedIn and Twitter and so forth, you will notice my posts on hot topics, such as the energy pricing, the impact of renewable uh, energy in our distribution networks, the political bid to restore confidence in the Murray, Basin, the Murray Darling Basin Authority. Blockchain, which is a, something which is core to, to my businesses. Anti-money anti -money laundering and, and so forth. These are issues that drives me today as it has a direct, direct impact on everyday Australian. I would not have been able to contribute to any of this without the education I received here at Victoria University. In closing, 
I wanted to share with you my experiences today, uh, in, today in a professional commitment, ability to overcome hardship in completing my course at university, and a strong belief in my ability not to gloat, but to show you that with the right grounding in terms of academic, academic foundation, confidence in your ability to make a difference, and above all, the support of your loved ones, you can indeed achieve your dreams. Thank you. Thank you, Jean-Marc, for sharing your story with us all. I would now like to invite the Chancellor, Mr. George Pappas, AO, to speak with you. The Chancellor's role is to chair the council and to guide the strategic direction of the university. Thank you, George. Thank you, Susan. Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, senior officers, academic and professional staff, graduands, graduands' families and friends, welcome to you all. But welcome especially to our graduands because today is the day that we celebrate your success. In graduating today, you've achieved a great deal. You've demonstrated a capacity to set goals and then work hard to achieve them. You've shown persistence and determination. And I also have no doubt that most of you have learnt the art of juggling priorities and many of you have overcome challenges in order to complete your studies. And these are not just qualities that have enabled you to gain your well-earned qualification, they're qualities that will assist you as you build your careers. Your success in completing your course is one of many successes that you will enjoy in your lives. So be proud of what you've achieved and know that your parents, your families, your friends and all the staff who've been part of your time with us are equally delighted with your success. You should also be aware that you're graduating from a university that is highly regarded, not just nationally, but internationally. Victoria University is ranked in the top 2% of universities worldwide. It's also been ranked amongst the top 50 of the universities that are less than 50 years old. And it's in the 50s of the Asia Pacific university rankings, all the hundreds of universities that are in the Asia Pacific region. All of these rankings are from the prestigious Times Higher Education Survey, and that is the most authoritative survey of university rankings in the world. We're proud of that success, because the success of our university is also your success. It gives prestige to your qualification. And you can probably claim, and proudly claim, that you're a graduate of one of the world's best universities. You can say that you're a graduate of a modern university that has done its best to equip you to meet the needs of our 21st century community. We aspire to the highest standards of teaching and learning. And we aim to provide our students with first-class facilities in which to learn. Our intention is to create the best student experience possible. We value your safety and your well-being, and we promote equitable, respectful relationships and believe that everyone has the right to live, work and study in a safe environment without fear. No doubt, you've all seen the recent media reports regarding the incidents of sexual assault and harassment at Australian universities that were released the other day by the Human Rights Commission. But well before that study was commissioned, Victoria University implemented a whole suite of measures to ensure the safety of our students and our staff, and I believe that these are making an impact. However, we want to assert that even one incident is one too many, and we will strive to stamp out as much of this kind of behaviour as we can. The university experience that you've enjoyed 
is an exciting and intellectually stimulating experience. But I know that it can also be challenging to absorb so much new information and to juggle your university commitments with the demands of your personal life. I hope that VU has proven to be a university that is supportive of your individual needs. The university is always exploring ways to continue to improve our services by tailoring the support that we provide to our students so that every student's unique requirements are satisfied. We want you to be leaders, not followers. We want you to be innovators and not bound by tradition. We also strive to be innovative and will continue to do so with such initiatives as our unique new first year college, which is being introduced next year, and which will support students to maximise their potential as they make the difficult transition to tertiary education. Now, because you're all graduating and you've completed your studies, you may wonder why a first year program would be of relevance to you. But as alumni of Victoria University, the value of your qualification will be enhanced as VU's reputation continues to grow. Through your tertiary study, we've helped you develop skills such as analytical and critical thinking. But the acquisition of knowledge must be a synergy of the theoretical and the practical. Victoria University has an established reputation for preparing students for the real world of work. We do this through a multiplicity of partnerships with businesses and with industry, and by involving practitioners in the development and the delivery of our courses. And of course, by giving as many of our students as possible practical work placements. We strive to provide you with the knowledge, with the skills, and with the experience to help you excel in your chosen career. In response to the changing needs of industry, the College of Business this year introduced two new master's courses, the Master of Tourism and the Master of Change, Innovation and Leadership. These new courses will build on the college's established reputation for excellence, which of course includes the fact that we are ranked as the second, the second uh, best Master of Business Administration program in Australia. And this, of course, is by the authoritative London-based CEO magazine. The college is also increasingly involved in entrepreneurial education. 20 students participated in the prestigious European Innovation Academy in 2016. And this year, a further 16 students attended that academy. With the benefit of the education that's offered by the college, as you graduate and leave us to embark on your career, consider how you might use the skills that you've acquired to strengthen the communities from which you've come, or the new communities that you are destined to become part of. During your time at Victoria University, I hope that one of the things that you've come to understand is that our vision is to not only help our students succeed, but to strengthen our society. If we can build healthier and resilient communities, we are helping to give future generations, perhaps your younger siblings or your children, a better start in life. Today, over 230 of you will graduate. And I encourage all of you to remain connected to the VU community as a member of the Alumni Association so that you can continue to build your personal and professional networks. And I have no doubt that you will be wonderful ambassadors for Victoria University, so I congratulate you once again. And to the family and friends who are with us today, can I just say that graduation ceremonies are formal occasions and we respect the formality of this occasion. But at Victoria University, we want to celebrate this occasion. You've heard from Jean-Marc, his experience, took him seven years to get his degree, 
juggling family commitments and working full time, that's an experience that's common to many Victoria University graduates. So we really want to show our great appreciation for all of the graduates. Each of the graduates who come up on stage to receive their degrees have to get from you a very loud round of applause and we encourage you to cheer as loud as loudly as possible. And if you don't, I'll stop the ceremony <laughs> and make sure that you do. I've been well known to do that. So of course, you will be the first, the first of our graduation ceremony audiences that doesn't get stopped, okay? You're going to cheer as loudly as possible for each and every graduate. That's your challenge. Now, graduands, this is your first task for the afternoon. Please stand. You've all noticed, because you're very keen students of the English language, that I'm calling you graduands rather than graduates. That's because you haven't quite graduated yet, but you're just about to. And to help me, to help me in the process of you becoming graduates, I call upon the chair of the Learning and Teaching Quality Committee of our academic board, Ms. Jacinta Richards, to present the authorised record of all conferred graduates for this, for this ceremony and for those in absentia. Thank you, Jacinta. And now, by virtue of the authority that is vested in me by the Council of Victoria University, I admit the duly authorised graduates to the appropriate awards and to all the rights and all of the privileges of those awards. Congratulations, you are now graduates. the next task for you as graduates, remain, remain standing, but I want you to turn around so that you can face your friends, your families, your supporters who are in the audience, mostly behind you, turn around and you give them a round of applause to say thank you, thank you for all of the support that you've given us to get here today. Thank you, parents.